So praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. I'm, uh, I'm excited about the Word of God this morning. I'm excited about what He's going to do to you and for you. And through this particular Word that He's put in my heart for the church, for where we're at now. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm wanting to celebrate. I just want to give God all the glory and the honor and the praise. How many of you all know you've watched my pages on Facebook and everywhere that we have our first granddaughter. Hallelujah. Harper Grace was born on, on Friday. They fetched her at 10 past 5. She had to have an emergency C-section because of her high blood pressure. And, um, you know, so let God be magnified. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen. So um, Harper is a bundle of joy, so sweet and so quiet and just so beautiful, perfect. She's perfect in every way. You know, every mom looks at a baby and says, my baby's perfect. You know, she was one of those perfect babies. All the babies in this church are born perfect. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'll just give God some thanks for all of that. And thank you to all of you who have been praying. And um, also we've been praying for um, Emily who had a procedure. And I've heard Mary Ann's back in hospital. And I don't know who else is sick in the body of Christ here. We just hand all these cares and concerns to the Lord. And our doctors will use wisdom in administering help where help is needed. Amen? So, how many of you are ready for the word today? Yeah. You want to, you know, we, we're in a transformation every day. Every day there's something new happening and, and something fresh flowing from the Spirit of God. And when we are in His presence, He satisfies those who are hungry. Come on, church, I'm saying God satisfies those who are hungry. So I take it that those who are not on the Daniel fast are not in church today. I take it. They are having breakfast somewhere. Hallelujah. And you all here because you're on the Daniel fast going through steadfastly. Amen. And Brother Noel has been such a blessing. He's been sending the encouraging word to me. I said, my brother, I need uh, some help here. It's been a busy week. I don't have time to practice and do all of these things. But since you started the fast before us, give us the revelation the Lord's given you. So most of the posts, some of the, the messages that are going out are that what he's done. And then I just add a little bit to it and tweak it. You know, I like to always tweak and bring the revelatory part from the prophetic what God shows me about it and add it to that. So it's a teamwork. And whoever sends me word, I just take that word and say, great God, you speak to everyone and let's just put that word in there as well. Amen. So I've been very blessed about that. So here's the thing. I've been meditating on something that has been going on in my heart for a while now, and um, hence the vision casting workshops, and that came up again. Because when the Lord said to me, you need to plan for what you want to create. He said, plan for what you want to create so that we can stop avoiding the things that we should be doing. We avoid a lot of things in our lives because we don't want to do the things we're supposed to do. So we avoid going to church because we don't want to fulfill our ministry. That's just for someone out there. Anyway, that's not my message. I just wanted to share something about what happened to me in this particular story for where I'm going with a message. Some years back, um, and I think I ministered on it as well, I said, are you a settler? Remember that? A few years ago, I, was, I ministered on, have you become a settler? Now, what happened was I became complacent. I became discouraged in ministry. I became, we didn't all get go through those motions. And I just became a little bit cold and got stuck in a rut. And very loudly, the Lord spoke to me and said, you've become a settler. And I said, oh, that's okay, God, because that's just how I feel. I don't want to get out of this. Just leave me alone. And it reminded me about um, a conference we then had that very year. We had the conference called the Bride of Christ. And the night I went home after the conference, it was a three-day conference, I went to lie on the bed. And suddenly there was this bright light. I was closing my eyes. There was the bright light. Now we have these automatic sensors in our driveway where the dogs are running around and the lights go up in the driveway and around the house. But this night, it wasn't the dogs. It wasn't the light that went up on the driveway, nothing. A bright light suddenly came into my room and filled the entire room. It was like midnight or something, and I wasn't sure what happened, but I got such a fright, and I awoke, 
And at the same time, Apostle awoke as well. But he said he saw me moving around in my sleep and, go, and I was saying something. I don't know what was happening to me. So obviously having a God encounter. And um, he said the Lord told him to leave me alone. The Lord told him not to bother me because he normally would, you know, wake me up and all of that. And then I explained to him what had happened and what I was feeling. And as I awoke that morning, I got this wow revelation from the Lord. You know, it was like suddenly that happened. Because I was so hungry for a move of God, because I was so hungry for people's lives to be changed, it wasn't about me. I said, God, this is what we're doing, Lord, is so people can be changed. And then he gave me the entire scripture, revelation, every form for everything for the conference. So in the same way, when I woke up, I heard his audible voice, and he says, this is your time. And that was like in 2012, and I said, God, time for what? And he said, time to be expectant for all the miracles that will happen hereafter. So the whole message, I'm not going to preach on that message now, but the scripture he gave me was in Revelation 22, 12. He says, behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. So I said, God, are you going to render to me according to what we've done in this conference? You know, and I was excited about that because no matter what happens, God will always reward us for the things that we're doing. He will always reward faith. God will always reward your patience. He will reward the tenacity that he has with that. So this is the thing. I, I don't always um, want to look at what others are saying about a specific topic. I want to know what God is speaking to me about. So when he's told me that your works... And I said, okay, God, now I need to look at everything that is coming, everything that I'm going to be doing. Now I need to work it out and make sure that it's God that is speaking to me. Because the scripture that the Lord gave for this morning is in, the, in Isaiah. And we're going to get there in, the, in, a, in a few minutes because I want to talk about the victory. But I want to talk about a sudden victory. My word for the year is victory. And then he said to me, you don't understand really what I mean when I say victory. I said, yes, Lord, it's my year of victory. It's the year for the church for Victory Praise Chapel. But he says, no, you still don't get it. There's another word that goes with it. And he said, it's going to be a sudden victory. Now, I feel sorry for the people that aren't here because suddenly something's going to happen to you here today. Malachi 3, chapter 1 says, behold, I'm going to send my messenger to you today, Teresa. <laughs> I don't know why he's giving me all these scriptures, because he's telling me, again, he's sending me as a messenger. He says, and she will clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. That he means he will suddenly come to you. He will suddenly give you the revelation. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So I'm coming to bring you a message which you will suddenly get a revelation for. But the one of the covenant, Jesus, he is coming to fulfill everything. Amen. Do you get that revelation now? I don't know about you. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you needed God to answer suddenly. Where you needed prayers answered suddenly. You needed money suddenly. You need a breakthrough in your health suddenly. God is looking for people who are serious about that. I don't know about you, but I've had urgent requests before the Lord many times. And some of you look at your challenges, you cry out to the Lord, When then, Lord? Wanna done? Who come down in Noni? Who come to so lang bach? So when we call on Him, we want Him to manifest suddenly. Come on. I want Him to answer me suddenly. Like when we were praying for Candace this entire week in the hospital, out of hospital, then the doctor gave a negative report about her, 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 her placenta that was not feeding baby enough and baby wasn't growing and he was afraid of baby's health. He was afraid of her kidneys. She could die or the baby could die and all of that. And, and I'm like, oh God, we didn't, we're looking for a suddenly Lord. And we were pressing in and pressing, and I went to her, and I kept on praying, and I anointed her, and I said, my girl, you've got to get rid of this fear. And I mean, she had normal birth with the first two babies, and now suddenly she's got to have a C-section, and intrusion into your anatomy like that is traumatic. I know what it's like. So, but God came through to her unexpectedly 
And suddenly there was a baby. <laughs> and she explained it to me. She says, Mom, it was so weird. You know, your mind had to fathom this because I'm lying in recovery and there's a leg there and they're moving it, but I can't feel it. I'm like, what is that? Is that my leg? You know? And she was, said, it was weird. She said, what an encounter. And I said, I don't know, my girl. I haven't been in that position either. So, and we were laughing, you know, because it was just so funny. God so brought some humor into it. So the literal meaning for the word suddenly means quickly, unexpectedly, something quickly, something swiftly, something when you least expect it, right? So there are many uh, synonyms, synonyms for immediately, abruptly, uh, abruptly, all of a sudden something will happen, instantaneously, promptly, straight away, and without you even noticing, without notice, suddenly. Like we can say, suddenly the blood will stop flowing there at Mary Ann. And suddenly uh, Emily will be totally restored. And suddenly Harper and Candace will, are healed and, and she's swiftly moving in all organs of her body again. Hallelujah. Harper's great. She's doing fine. I'm talking about Candace. I'm using that as an example, right? So here's the thing. There's a story that in, on the History Channel about anthropologists who go to live in certain tribes. And when they've been there long enough or, or, or they spend too many years there, what happens is they adapt the culture of the environment. So in the group where they are at, so many times when their peers and superiors call them back after the experiment or assignment or whatever, and if they are involved for too long, they cannot come back to their original culture. That's amazing. So they become a settler. I've, when you spend too much time with a certain group of people, a certain sect of people, you develop their culture. It comes onto you. You become like them. Like if you spend a lot of time, more than three months in Victory Praise Chapel, you will become like Christ. You'll be Christ-centered. Your mind will be focused on Him. You'll be supernaturally moving in the things of God. You'll be anointed and appointed to do mighty exploits for the Lord. Come on our church. Hallelujah. So, I, know if you, I, I love the book, the, the Jungle Book, as I grew up. I used to love reading the Jungle Book. Then there was a movie out on the Jungle Book. And my favorite character is obviously Mowgli. You're right. So, he also became one of those who adapted the culture of the jungle. And when he came out of the jungle, it's like, uh, uh, also like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Tarzan, you know, the same thing. So, what he's saying is when you adopt the culture that was not originally ours, you become like the people you're around. The only thing that is going to pull you out from being in that place or where you realize that this is not who I really am is when you find and realize your identity in God. And it's only his word that can pull you out. Have I not anointed you? Have I not called you? Did I not put my spirit upon you? Did I not restore you and forgive you and heal you? Are you not the one that can speak to the nations? The Lord needs to sometimes remind you about your purpose and about your calling. So some people want to blend in with the world. They, they don't even look different to the world. They, they start talking like the world. They start dressing like the world. Everything they do is like the world. They don't stand out. They've become settlers. They've, they've, become, they've adapted the culture of where they are at. So when God's word pulls you out, when, this is only when you allow him to do it. Because God is about to do a suddenly for someone here today. He's about to do a suddenly for probably all of you, or if not many of you. A word, you must allow the word of God to flow over you today. I can't do this for you. I Knock your neighbor and say, prophet can't do it for you. Your wife and your husband can't do it for you. Only God's word. Psalm 62 verse 5 says, My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. I expect great things because we serve a great God. And that is why I can place a demand on him. Isaiah 43, verse 8, 48, verse 3, sorry. 48, verse 3. 
You remember the message I preached on divine interruptions, interrupting the interruptions? It's something like that. It's like a follow-on from interrupting the interruption, interruptions because there's a rapid, unexpected surprise coming your way. Woo! Whoa! Yeah! Woo! I need that, God. A rapid, unexpected surprise. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love it. I love rapid, unexpected surprises. People rocking up at my door. People phoning me saying, Woo, I need your mm, bank account number. Or people saying, Whoa, here's your ticket to whatever. You know, oh, wow, come on, let's go out to dinner. Or come on, let's go. And this person was healed of a miracle. Let's go back to the hospital and rejoice with them. I love such unexpected surprises. Remember that Isaiah 48 verse 3, the Lord's word says, I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. He did it suddenly. Do you still think that you can go and do something contrary to your calling, contrary to the word of God? You will find that suddenly that cigarette will fall out of your hand. Or you'll find suddenly the beer you wanted to drink turned into sour grapes or something. That you so revolting it will come out of your ears. Suddenly, the couple that was fighting will just hug each other. They want to still say another word and suddenly they find each other clinging toward each other. And those who want to run away and do all the wrong things, suddenly they will trip. Not fall, they will just trip and they'll get a wake-up call. Because suddenly something will happen. I speak suddenlies over all of them in Jesus' name. There are many suddenlies in the book of Acts. In Luke 2 it says in verse 9, When suddenly an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with terror. Acts 2 verse 2, And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Where did the wind come from? Where did the wind come? Sorry. Where did the wind come? When they, where they were sitting, suddenly the wind came in. And it came where? To where they were sitting. Now, the important thing is where they were sitting. Right. Keep that in mind. So, my thing is, what were they doing before the wind came in? Hmm. Listen. Verse 1. Of that scripture, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. One accord in one place. Then, suddenly, they had the same mind, in the same place, worshiping the same God. They had their focus and their eyes set on one thing, the same things. Then, suddenly. So when you look at all of his scriptures, Acts 16, 26, you can also look. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the prison was shaken. And immediately, suddenly, all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Now that sounds like a supernatural intervention to me. What do you see there? Before that, what were they doing? They were praising God. And that is why when we praise God here, and what happened here this morning, there was a shift in the atmosphere. And when they went into the time of praying in the Spirit, worshiping in the Spirit, that moment I got the scripture on James 4 verse 7, where the Bible said, submit to God, resist the devil. And I thought, I'm not going to come up and say that. Some of you had to, when I heard that you were going into a warfare worship, I knew people were resisting the devil. And the Bible says, before that, What's the verse before that? Just go back one scripture forward. I mean, James 4, verse 5 or 6. James 4. Let's just read there quickly. Okay, it's getting it. So so, so it, it speaks about when you submit to God. What is that verse? Five, verse 5, or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit 
that he has made to dwell in us. So God yearns of the spirit dwelling in us. Go up one more. And then it says in verse 6, but he gives, no, he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud. So a proud cannot have a suddenly. He opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And go on. So he says, submit yourselves and only humility. Humbleness means submitting to God. Submitting yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So there is another suddenly waiting for you. When you submit to God, resist the devil, then suddenly you'll be okay. So there's another account of Matthew, in Matthew 8, verse 24. But suddenly there arose a storm on the lake, so that the waves threatened to engulf the boat. But he was asleep. Jesus was asleep. Matthew 17, verse 3. Then suddenly they saw Jesus coming to meet them. Peace be with you, he said. And they came and clasped his feet, bowing to the ground before him. Suddenly. 1 Timothy 5, 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Don't agree with people when they are gossiping about other people. Don't agree with people when they are partaking in another man's sin, when they are doing things that are not right. Keep thyself pure. The Bible says keep thyself pure. When someone wants to talk and sin and gossip, you say, you know, excuse me, I've got to go. Or just change the subject, go and someone, what, just do whatever you need to do. So the title scripture for this, the title for this message is Sudden Victory. And the scripture that goes with that is Isaiah 48 verse 3, where the Lord says, I declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth from my mouth, and I showed them, and I did them suddenly, and it came to pass. If you remember anything today, memorize that scripture. So the thing is here, what were these people thinking? What were they doing to receive their suddenly? What was the prerequisite? To their suddenly. What is the prerequisite to a miracle for you to receive a sudden miracle? What do you have to do? Number one. Believe God's word. And act on it. Believe God's word and do it. Act on it. Don't just memorize it or just say it out there, but don't act on it because faith without works is dead. If you're saying the word, but you're not applying it, it's not going to bring you anything. So God is looking for people that believe in his word to act on it. When we look at the scriptures, when it says, how do suddenlies happen? When I look at the time when you the second thing that you've got to do is to meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word for your suddenly to come. In Joshua 1 verse 8, it says, This book of the Lord shall not depart from my mouth, but we shall meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then you will make, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have good success. So you've got to first clean your mind. Get rid of all the negative thoughts, every demonic thoughts and spirits that is lurking around you, everything that is not from God, so that you can immediately and suddenly begin feeling the Word and the Spirit of God moving through you, so you can meditate on the Word of God. We cannot read the Bible or meditate on the Word of God when your mind is so filled with negative things and the enemy is tormenting your mind. So when I'm talking about purifying, I'm talking about cleansing your mind, I'm saying meditate on the word, chew the word, like, you know, like it's your food, no Bible, no breakfast, think about it, before you go to breakfast, make sure you had your Bible in your hand or the word of God, you remember you need to tell the enemy he needs to flee from your mind, so the word of God includes your healing and prosperity, 
You know, I got such a powerful revelation from the Lord two weeks ago for the Couples of Destiny. Whoa, I'm so excited about this workshop coming up. It's something different. It's something new. And I can tell you what, it's going to shake a lot of people. It's going to make them like, whoa, man, I knew it. I knew it. I'm telling you now, I can't let the cat out of the bag. You've got to either listen to the, the broadcast or somehow get, get connected with it. So here's the thing. In James 4, 8, God says in his word, he says, draw close to the Lord and he will draw close to you. You've got to take your journey with God very seriously. Be meaningful about it. Be connected. He will make things happen to, for you suddenly when you stay connected to him. We sing the song, draw me close to you. Never let me go. And he doesn't let you go. I lay it all down again. Why did you have to lay it all down again? You the one that let him go. And then I want to come back and say, I give myself to you, Lord. Yeah. Just stay there. Don't go away. Don't get sucked into the wall. Don't become um, a settler. Don't take on the culture of the world. Stay in the word. So the other thing you need for your suddenly is to be prepared. Consider the life of Joseph, of, of, of Moses and Esther. There are so many more. There was always a purpose in the preparation. And I speak about the preparation all the time because if you don't prepare, you cannot receive what you are praying for. You can't say, God, I'm praying for a promotion or a job, but you haven't studied for the promotion that you want to get into. You haven't had the the the... The, the look or the feeling of the office you're moving into because you haven't prepared because God has a kairos time. The timing is important. It's a strategic time, the chronos time, which is a planned calendar time. So when you look at the different times and you say, God, your kairos time, in your time, your strategic plan you have for me, or the chronos time, which is exactly the time the event should happen for you. That is what the suddenly preparation is for. And then the next one is where the suddenly will manifest. Your breakthrough probably didn't come in your previous season. And probably for some it may not come in this season. Because too many people still want to just dwell in the outer courts. They haven't yet moved from the outer courts into the holy place. So here's the thing. When the Lord says he's opened up the doors that no man can shut, I'm telling you there are people that are running away from their purpose and their calling because they've placed limitations on themselves. They haven't entered into the door that God opened for them. This is what I saw this week. When I saw the door opened, I saw people walking toward the door, but then suddenly they walked to the left. And some of them walked to the right, but they didn't walk through the door. There was another door that opened for them over there, and then suddenly another door opened over there, and the Lord says, this door is still standing wide open, and they haven't come in. Because they heard something from another place or from another person, and they got distracted, and this is why you see what you're seeing here. Either they've become, uh, um, um, what do you call, uh, they've they've become defensive, or they've taken up uh, an offense, And uh, they heard something else, but they're not entering through the door that God had opened up for them. But here's the thing. And I said, the Lord, now how is this going to happen? God, he says, because this is the time, this is the year where the suddenly is going to happen. The sudden victory is going to come. Like I said to, I don't know where I was, and I was saying, God is going to take some people, like he's taking them by the scruff of their necks, and say, hello, what are you doing here? Get out of here, and I'm putting you back so you can be where you're supposed to be. And I think I spoke about this New Year's Eve, if I'm not mistaken, how the Lord is going to shift you into your groove. He's going to put you where you belong. People don't realize what is happening around the world. It's not by accident that these things are happening. It's not coincidental that these things are happening. It's because of this word, sudden victory. So you'll see a danger happening. And then suddenly you'll start praying in the Holy Ghost. Suddenly you feel the urge or the need to speak to someone, phone them up, whatever. And suddenly you'll be saving someone from their death. Don't become complacent. When God speaks to you about something or someone, send them the message. 
Because God needs messengers. The laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. They want to sit home and chew. <laughs> that was just something. The Lord said in his word, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are an answer to someone's prayer. You are mine, says the Lord. You are what others need. Verse 4 in, in, in Isaiah 43, it says, Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. There, will, there I will give men for you and people for your life. Ah, doesn't God love you so much? Doesn't God love us so very much that he will send people to you? He said, you've been honored. I will give men and people for your life. They are the ones who will come and speak into your life. They are the ones who will come and bring you the warning. They are the ones who will tell you, go this way or not that way. Sometimes you hear the voice of God, but you don't even want to obey it or listen to it. You still want to do your own thing because you are so headstrong that you just, you think you got it all together. Amen. You have a mandate. You have a passion to do something for the Lord. This is a time where the shift is going on. The shift is happening to you. And I told you the word the Lord gave us, that was 2013, or what was it? Shift. Something happening inside for tomorrow. That was a download from the Lord to me. And I said, Lord, we need to shift. Shift us now, right now, suddenly today, so that we can be ready for what's going to come tomorrow. You see, the thing was, God will send you all the resources he will send you even human resources, people that will come to you. That is what his word says. People will come into your presence, and as you listen to them, you will know, you will know that you know that this is God. God will even use the unsaved, the person who's been cursing at your workplace, or the person whom you don't really want to listen to. God will even use them to speak to you. Open up your ears to hear. It's going to be like Elizabeth when she met Mary. The baby leapt in a womb. Because he connected with something else. And it's going to be like that divine intervention. You will know there's going to be like a baby leaping in your womb, knowing I've got to listen to what this person is saying to me today. I'm not saying go on to every channel on YouTube and Facebook. Don't listen to all this nonsense, guys. I'm telling you now, church, the corruption that is out there is worse than any other sin in this world. Because they're bringing confusion, they're bringing fear, and they're inflicting um, lies upon people and uh, all sorts of things that are scary. It is so scary. So we have a relationship with one of the prophets, well-known man of God, and he was sharing something with us about watching what people are watching on media and social media. And they all look great. And do you know how many of them are fake they look like they've got these great churches, but they've put funny stuff on the background to make them look great. Some of these pastors are sending us messages to come to their churches, and when we look at this, and like, mm, something's not right here. Spirit of the Lord will give you discernment, sharp discernment. They're taking pictures from other people. Someone sent me a prayer request on Facebook about I must go to this group, and I looked at this, and I went down the thing to see what it was all about, and it's all fake they tell you to pray for a child that has some certain disease. Then there's a woman that has uh, a cancer, something on her face here. And she says, I have this uh, a wound, wound on my face and I have cancer and no one wants to pray for me. So they put all the sad, sordid stories on their page. It doesn't belong to them. It's all fake. They're wasting your time, your bandwidth, your air time, your money. And they're stealing quality time where you could have been in his book and not on Facebook. The only Facebook you go to is Victory Praise Chapel. And Woman of Substance SA, come on, go to those groups and pages. Listen to what the Lord is saying to you. You're not here by accident because God is wanting to put you in the place where you're supposed to be because some people are not where they're supposed to be. They're going around in circles. They're like that, that little uh, uh, rodent, the little white rat, the hamster, going around in circles, in circles, in circles, and has no direction, clueless. And God is saying, suddenly... I'm going to put a spoke in that wheel so you can stop going around and around in circles. I'm going to pull you by the scruff of your neck. I'm going to cause men to come to you to put you back in place. 
And you're not going to like it when certain people say things to you, but you're going to have to take it. Take it like a big girl and a big boy because you want change. Come on. I'm no longer that stern and very hard person I used to be like, off is rech, off is weg. You remember I used to be like that many years ago, 10 years ago. Remember those of you who knew me longer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Conrad, for that vote of confidence in me. He's seen the change. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know what? God is faithful. You know, and I had to repent. I said, Lord, I'm sorry if I hurt your people. But he says, but I made you like that. I don't have to apologize. He says, you, you, and you know, when two prophets poked this over me, I said to my husband a month before these prophets came, I said, honey, I really don't want to be so hard and speak the word like so crushed. You know, I'm like, Shh, just saying it. He says, you can't tell me that. If the Lord has given you that, you've got to go with it. And I said, no, I want you to pray for me like Paul prayed. And he says, woman, pray that you'd have a gentle and quiet spirit. He says, no, who was Paul speaking to? He wasn't speaking to the woman of God like you. He was speaking to another church. And I said, Lord, okay, give me a gentle, quiet spirit anyway, you know. So the week later, a, 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 a minister comes, uh, um, Ed Trout, and he comes and he prophesies over me. And he stands there, and I'm standing in the front row. And he says, and you, ma'am, you've been telling the Lord to make you quiet. But the Lord says, I see you sometimes come across like a man. And he says, I like that about you. I've placed that inside of you because people need to hear what you're saying. And he says, some people actually like it. So I'm like, some like it, that means others don't. Anyway, I didn't check the word at the time. But, and then the following, uh, uh, two or three months later, another prophet comes. And he says exactly the same word. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to just be obedient to you. I'm going to listen to you. Because the thing is, you know, opportunities are coming your way. And if you don't have someone like me or someone in your sphere of influence speaking to you the word like this and being radical about their faith, then I don't know. Then you probably have to spend 24 hours a day in the word and find that one word will jump out you and say, okay, Lord, I got it. Or say, Lord, give me a revelation. Hallelujah. What scripture are you giving me? <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm just saying again because some people have missed the previous opportunity. Some of them have missed the glory cloud because they choose not to worship. They chose not to be in that atmosphere. Let me tell you something. There's something about being in the right atmosphere, especially where there's an anointing to receive your miracle like we had this morning. And I must say, every Sunday service in our worship, it's a miracle atmosphere because you love God, you worship God, you give him your all. And that is why he shows up every time. He manifests his goodness. The angels are always here. So, where was I? Don't miss the glory cloud. Because there's a specific, a specific anointing for you to receive your miracle. Don't let us, the distraction of unbelief stop you from receiving what God has in store for you. Isaiah 41 verse 13, it says, For I am the Lord your God. I take hold of your right hand. Do not fear, my child. Do not fear, I will help you. <laughs> Lord, I just need some help, God. Who can come? The Lord is saying, don't fear, I can help you. You say, family, you need to, you need not look to the left or right. It's amazing that I had to say that earlier, and I don't want to look to the left or to the right for the confirmation. The answer is already inside of you. You know what you've got to do. The gifts and skills and the anointing. You've got the personality, the character. You've got everything that you need to do what God has called you to do. Do you know who's holding you back? Don't give the enemy the, 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 the benefit. He's going to feel great if we give him the glory. You are holding you back. Not the enemy. You are your worst enemy. No one. You can't blame anyone. You are holding you back. Is this a good message? Yes. Yeah, I'm preaching to myself here. I'm enjoying this word. Amen. So God sent us help. Mm. <laughs> he sent us help. A few weeks ago, we celebrated that help. It wasn't his death, but we celebrated his birth. We did the whole nativity. We celebrated the help. By sending Jesus in Isaiah 9. 
He said, suddenly there will be no more gloom in the land that suffered. In the past, God made the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali hang their heads in shame. But in the future, those lands will be made great. They will stretch from the road to the Mediterranean Sea and to the land beyond the Jordan River and the north of Galilee and the land of the people who are not Israelites. Verse 2, but for the people who lived in darkness, but now they have seen the great light. They lived in the dark land, but the light shined on them. God, you have caused the nation to grow and made the people happy. And they have shown their happiness to you, like the joy during harvest time, like the joy of people, taking what they have won in war, etc., etc. You can go read the rest of the scripture. The last part of the verse, in verse 7, it says, Power and peace will be in his kingdom and will continue to grow forever. He will rule as king on David's throne and over David's kingdom. He will make it strong by ruling with justice and goodness. For now, from now on and forever, the Lord all-powerful will do this because of his strong love for his people. The Lord will do this for you suddenly. <laughs> Draw close to God. Pray for the Lord that he will bring the harvest. You are going to be a vessel. We sing the song. Make me an offering. Make me a Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing. And all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. We all sing it. We want him to bring new wine out of us. And here's the thing, Hebrews 1.13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Uh, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They had their eyes on the prize. Where are your eyes going around? What are you gazing upon? This new wine is for you to pour out God's will on his people. God is putting you back into your groove. He's putting you back into what he originally planned for you so that you can keep your eyes on the prize. Family, don't miss this. This, if there's ever, ever a time in your life when you wanted to experience the goodness of God, it is now. Now is your time, ever, ever. This is it. There's no other time. There's no other way but through this way. And those of you on the Daniel fast, it's really important. It's essential that you pay attention. Pay attention and listen to what the Lord is speaking to you. And as we've been encouraging you every day, journal. Write down what the Lord is telling you. He's giving you answers to your victory. When you read the word that we send out, listen to it. Meditate on it. Ask God for yourself, Lord, what are you saying to me through this word? If you're not getting it on WhatsApp, I will ask Maxine to send it to you on email or on SMS. You just got to let her know how you prefer to receive your communication. So this is the thing. Write it down. I'm waiting on your reports, your praise reports, your testimonies from what God is going doing for you through this fast. He has already done mighty things for us during this fast. I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. There's not a day that has gone by that God hasn't shown us his victory plan. He hasn't shown us a sudden victory in everything that we're busy with. You don't know what's going on in my home. You don't know what's going on in and around the ministry. All you've got to do is focus on God and keep praying for God's perfect will because what he's doing through us and for us is going to come and bring a blessing upon the ministry. Amen? So here's the thing. Many times you, always, you won't always be pleasing your friends if you want to please God. When you're a God pleaser, you cannot be a people pleaser. I mean, they won't always like to be around you. They don't always want to visit you because you're not in their space, right? You have a choice. You either listen to God's voice over their voice. And when the doctor gave Candace all the negative reports about she could die and the baby could die, I said to you, you drown out that negative voice and you bring, let the word of God drown out the voice of the doctor. We understand they, they're clever and whatever. They, they know what they're doing. 
but we drown out the, 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 the negative words with God's word that they will live and not die. Amen. So you have a choice. You control what you allow in your thoughts and in your mind. You control what you allow in your emotions. Where to tell someone seriously yesterday, listen, you've got to do this. And they say, but I don't feel right. I said, it's not about what you feel. It's not about your emotions. It's about doing what is right. Whether you're feeling great or not, you do what is right. So, and this is what God wants us to do. Not wait till you have a happy feeling or get goosebumps. Oh, now I can go lay hands. Or, oh, now I've got the anointing. Oh, I've got to go lay hands on somebody. No. Just do what is right. That anointing is for you to do something. Maybe he's shaking your hand so you can be a better typist tomorrow. You know? Or maybe he's shaking your foot so you can go walk to church the right, you know, do the right thing and not walk the right place. So here's the thing. Like Paul and Silas experienced their prison door breaking suddenly. Peter showed up at the door while the church was praying suddenly. After an angel opened his prison door suddenly in the, in the, with the 120 in the upper room, they were in one accord and suddenly something happened. They experienced the miraculous release of the Spirit of God. So when you come into your place, when you read further on, it grows. The story grows of those who experience God's moving. And then suddenly, Jarius, for example, he came and he said, my daughter, on a Sabbath day, he said, my daughter's dying. And then suddenly, suddenly, something happened for him. He was ruling the synagogue and he had all the political power, but that power couldn't save his child. He needed the power. He needed a supernatural intervention. But because he was desperately seeking Jesus, Many things about what these people were doing, they were desperate in their situation. He was desperate to save her. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She was desperate for a healing. She took her eyes off the doctors. She says, I've been to doctors. I've been through all these procedures and nothing could help me because she now said, Jesus, only you can. She found a relief and looking for deliverance for her situation. Only God can. So talking about these suddenlies, you know that song, like the woman with the issue of blood, we press in, we press in. Like the blind man waiting patiently, we press in. Yeah, they pressed in through the crowd. Then suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came and set me free. Suddenly, as they were pressing in, you see, when you give up on your medication, when you give up on what people are saying, when all hope is gone, and now last resort is Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> we sound like Bar blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, Lord. Please heal me. Please take me out of this financial rut. God, please, whatever, save my family, save my marriage. Jesus, we want to call on him. Yeah. That faith will hear you, will hear you when you are so desperate. But don't go back to the world again, because then you will lose it. Many people have. So he sets you free. So the significance about all of these accounts that I'm sharing with you, it's not by chance that these stories are linked together in Scripture, because they were both powerless to change their situation. They couldn't do anything. They were just human. They were dealing with different difficult situations like we are, and they were looking for the same thing. They needed a divine encounter. You can take this message to someone that you want to invite to the encounter. I don't know if the invitations are ready. I've asked to make invitations that you can give someone a special invitation that you know they are going through some real, real bad stuff. And they can be in church. They can be Christians in another religious church, stuck in a religion. They can be someone who's not churched or from another cult. Say, you know what? God will give you a divine face person you come across to give that invitation to. And that is why I asked for the invitations because God said, give people a specific invitation. Make it pretty and hand them an invitation card. So we have two or three weeks left before the encounter comes. Prepare them because they need a suddenly. They need a sudden intervention. So this is the thing. God miraculously did as they asked him to do in both instances. He healed and he resurrected them. They suddenly, her blood issue was not existing anymore. Mark 5, you can read about it in verse 21. And Darius' daughter in Mark 5, 42, you can read about that. 
So many believers today need an encounter with God who answers, the God who heals, the God who delivers, and the God who brings things to your sudden end. He's coming to your house today, church. He's coming to your house today, Victory Praise Chapel, so you can have a sudden victory in your life. Resurrecting dead dreams, breathing life into your dead visions, bringing hope where there's no hope. He's coming there, everyone, to restore. You'll be astonished to see the signs and the miracles and the wonders that are going to be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. Prepare your hearts. Get ready for the God encounters because you will experience a suddenly for yourself first before you can invite someone else to come and experience their sudden name. <laughs> Jesus spoke with authority, clarity, and with power. He didn't wait for anything. He just said, Talita Kumi. And she arose. She got up. Little girl, I say to you, arise. That's what it means. And he's saying to you today, Talita Kumi, arise from that dead situation. Arise from that dead thought or that dead emotion, the very thing that has been holding you back. Psalm 147 verse 15 says, He sent forth his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. Oh, when he sent his command to the earth, today he's given you a command. It says his word runs suddenly because swiftly is a synonym, synonym for suddenly. His word runs suddenly. So there you go, church. Victory over every weakness. We serve a good, good father. His word loves and encourages us more and more every day. Empty yourself out so you can have a sudden victory. This is your time, your divine season, your divine moment that God is going to bring a suddenly into your life. Amen. So I've got a manifestation of things that I want you to declare with me today. I took it from the book of Sudden Breakthrough. And I've been reading it and I'm like, yes, God, forgetting about these things. We just need to get back into the flow again. I want you to stand and just speak it over or speak this with me so you can let that just minister and manifest in your spirit. So you can walk out here today and say, Lord, I'm, I've got this. I've got this. And declare it with me today. Let everything that has been held up in my life be released suddenly. Let every barren place in my life flourish suddenly. Let every sickness and infirmity in my life be healed suddenly. Let dry bones suddenly live. Let my enemies be suddenly crushed and scattered. Let my finances go from not enough to an overflow suddenly. Let every no be turned into a yes suddenly. Let every weary person receive strength suddenly. Let every closed door be opened suddenly. Let every no be turned into a yes suddenly. Let every red light turn into a green suddenly. Let an anointing for miracles and favor suddenly pursue, overtake, and consume me. Let restoration. Come to my family, to my marriage, to my relationships, suddenly. Let your peace come into our home, into the workplace, into the schools, into governmental institutions. Suddenly, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, suddenly. Ah, oh, Jesus.